You're setting me up? That's the emergency? Think of it as a festive love emergency. She's really been getting into the romantic Christmas movies. Mm. Trust me, in a few years' time, you'll be thanking me in your wedding speech. OK, if I'm going to spend my lunch hour here, can you at least tell me who the lucky guy is? Yep. Oh, yes, Max, you brought me novelty festive headband. Thought that would break the ice for me and me date. So come on then, Auntie Di, who's the lucky man? Hello, Scott. Hi, I'm here to collect the drinks order for the Christmas party. <laughs> you know, I feel really embarrassed that I thought Diane was trying to set us up. Well, you didn't exactly sound thrilled. I thought we'd settled on just being friends ages ago. We're not going to rehash that, are we? Yeah, I guess you're right. So are you going to be kissing anyone else under the mistletoe this year? I'm really sorry to interrupt. Maxine, did you hear about our Christmas party? It would be lovely to see you there. Uh, well, I'll have a think about it in text you. Or not. Maybe I just won't text you ever again. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, Mr Ramsey, I've just heard from the school and they said they need an extra pair of hands for break duty. Would you mind? Oh, of course not. Look, I am really sorry if I gave you the impression that... Please don't say that. Look, I know that what happened between us was just casual, but it's not okay to just disappear from the face of the earth. You made me feel cheap. And for that, I'm sorry. But truth be told, what happened between us, it, um... It felt right. Well, I enjoyed it too. That's why it stung when I didn't hear anything from you. Well, I would really like it if you would come to our Christmas party. As my date. What do you say? Do you want me to get your dad? No, no, don't do that. It's about my dad. I think he's asked out that Maxine lady. Well, maybe you should speak to him about it. <laughs> yeah, like he'd speak to me about stuff like that. Well, for, for what it's worth, I, I think she's a lovely lady. Yeah, I just... I hate that I found out about it from someone else. Like, I get that he's got a personal life, but it's like I don't even know him. Like, does he even like me? Of course he likes you. What a thing to say. How can you even question that? I don't know, I just... It feels like a complete stranger. Well, I, I don't think he really knows himself half the time. What does that mean? Nothing. No, no, I, I, I just mean because he's a very complicated guy, your dad. You know something about him, don't you? What? Uh, Mr McQueen, my dad is the only parent I've got left. Please help me understand him. OK. Maybe there is one or two things you need to know. Mr McQueen, you've been dancing around it for ages. What's wrong with my dad? Well, you know that he's a deeply religious man. So he's trying to, um, to, to, to reconcile that with these complicated feelings that he may or may not be having. I really shouldn't be telling you all of this. Does he want to sleep around? Is that what you're embarrassed to tell me? But he doesn't think he can because he's religious? That's not exactly what I'm... I'm Mr McQueen, come on. All I want is a normal relationship with the only parent I've got left. How am I supposed to do that if I don't even know him? And he's supposed to love me more than anything else in the world. And I... he, 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 does, he does love you. He does. And then this stuff with Maxine, it's, it's, it's nothing. In fact, she, she said a while ago that it was nothing serious. A while ago? How long have they been...? I, I, I mean... Uh... I can't believe he didn't tell me. Mr Shepherd, how's it all going for the staff party? Oh, uh, good, yes. Gareth and I are just taking the last of the refreshments over. Excellent. Rallying the troops. I am so excited. I get to go to a function in that school without having all the stress of organising it. Mm. Yeah, well, listen, keep an eye out for that Sandra, because any hint a mistletoe, she'll be on her own rampage. Really? 
She sounds like a proper legend. Let me know if you need any help. Not that you need it. I mean, if you're lugging that stuff around, then you must be fit as a fiddle. It'll be a winter wonderland. Yes, well, it's certainly getting there. Hey, can't talk now what I've got ya. Yeah? So good to see John Paul back at the school working. I was just wondering if you could give my own to his job back. Well, I don't really think now is the time. Well, it's just with my prince's hearing coming up, I'd love for one of my boys to catch a break. Dad! Were you ever going to tell me? Um, Gareth, I'll catch you up. Whatever you need. You're sleeping with Mason's sister? Could you keep your voice down? Maxine, don't deny it. John Paul told me it's been going on for a while. I wouldn't worry about it, mate. It's the same every year. The kids can pretty much smell Christmas. My year 11s weren't even pretending to listen to me. All right, what can I get you, mate? Uh, get us an orange juice. I'm going to nip for a wee. Hey, was my attempt at playing matchmaker with Scott and John Paul as disastrous as it looked? Do you know what? I think they're just happy as mates. Good effort, though. Yeah, well, maybe I should have just tried setting you and Maxine up after all. I don't think that would have worked either. I'm pretty sure there's something going on with her and Carter. Mm -hmm. Oh, speak of the devil. Oh, Carter, you're OK. Oh, did one of the new bar staff give you the wrong drinks or something for the party? No, no, not at all. Is John Paul here? A colleague said he would be. He's just nipped to the loo. Uh, can I leave that there? I just need a word. You tell Freya about Maxine. She already knew. You had no right. What does it matter, anyway? It's not like you're ever going to have a relationship with her. We might do. Give it up. I'm not like you, John Paul. I am trying to be a better person. No. You are trying to live a lie. At the expense of my friend's happiness, that does not make you a better person. I'm not interested in debating my personal life with you. I came in here to tell you to stay out of my business. And what if I don't? What if I tell Maxine about what happened between us? What if, what if I tell Maxine that if she has any kind of relationship with you, she's gonna get heartbroken? You dare? Do you have any idea how hard I have worked to live the life that I do? Do you? Do not give in to the filthy temptation that you and your people seem to think that I should be proud of. Well, I'm not about to let all that get ruined by some smug potster. Go on, say it. Say it. I dare you. Let out all of your internalized homophobia on me. Just did. Do you mind if we um don't tell anyone? Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Make sure to click here to watch full episodes of Hollyoaks right here on YouTube, or click here to catch up on all the latest drama in the village. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Hollyoaks.